Hello. Today we have with us Vivian Bentley. Vivian is an integrative psychologist and coach. Hello, Vivian. Hi, Sebastian. Lovely to be with you. Thank you. Could you please introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, so um, I'm an integrative psychologist and coach. Um, I have a private practice here in Montreal, and I work in person and online. And I'm also uh, a mind-body movement teacher so, and offer women's circles in the area of well-being, sexuality, uh, relationships. And um, I've been doing this for about 20 years now. I went back to school in the... In, it was more of a, a, a second career, you could say. Um, and uh, yes, that's... Uh, oh, and I continue to study all the time. <laughs> That sounds great. Could you let us know what is integrative psychology and coaching? Uh, yes, yeah, so when, um, actually before I became a psychologist, I studied um, meditation. I studied Buddhism meditation. I went into therapy myself uh, during a life transition and uh, started to meditate because what I noticed was that I had a lot of negative thought patterns and fearful, stressful thought patterns. And so um, I went on a quest to really still my mind and become more aware of, of my mental habits. And so I took all kinds of Buddhist retreats and meditated every day. And this was way before actually I went back to school and became a psychologist. And so when, um, when I actually went into psychology, I mean, I really lo loved learning. I'm a very good student. I like ac academia, but I felt like there was a lot missing from what I understood of what health and well-being was. And so I wanted to combine um, a perspective that combined Eastern and Western psychology. And um, at the time, it was, um, it was just starting. There were doctors and other therapists and other people that were doing that. I mean, of course, now, in 2020, it's much more my, my mainstream. And mindfulness. Um, but I use the term integrative psychologist really to describe the fact that I use a many, I combine many different approaches. Um, and then the coaching term really comes from a sense that um, I like to help people help themselves. So I don't necessarily feel like they, they need to be dependent on me. That my, It's really that they need, we all need to practice every day. Yes, I understand. To be healthy and well. And so I give people a lot of resources and um, I hold a, a perspective that um, includes wellness and and so the coaching part is more about helping, inspiring people, guiding people, and giving them a lot of resources that they can take into their own life. Oh, wonderful, great. And you see nowadays in the modern society, people are confronted more and more with depression and anxiety. How can integrative psychology assist them with these problems? So um, I'm going to start with depression and, and look at depression and anxiety separately. So depression can actually comprise many different things. So from, a, from an integrative psychology perspective, as someone who studies things from many different um, dimensions and very many different theories, um, I understand that depression is not a one-size-fits-all. First of all, sometimes people um, might be depressed because of a certain situation. Let's say they have a loss, a grief, someone they lost in their family, or they're going through a difficult breakup. And so then it's, it's not so much depression, how we understand clinical depression. It's more that there's a lot of feelings of grief and sadness, maybe sometimes anger, 
that is creating a lot of distress and disease in their system, which needs to be addressed. And so as a psychologist, I would really look at um, where, you know, the underlying root causes of the depression and help people to uh, feel their emotions. You know, often depression is a call, you know, oh, I had one teacher um, who, who said to me that depression is repressed potential, that, that sometimes it's our soul calling to uh, be heard and we are depressed because we're not really living into our true selves or our true potential or our true lives. This is so profound. Who experiences depression would necessarily have the same underlying reasons or underlying causes. Um, and so I think it's important to be aware of that and not necessarily treat everybody as, as one size fits all, if you like. Yeah, of course. Um, and also sometimes trauma can be, um, you know, if we've had childhood trauma or even adult trauma, it can create um, symptoms of sadness, symptoms of depression, hopelessness. Uh, so I feel um, as an integrative psychologist, because I do study many um, areas of medicine, neuroscience, um, psychology, wellness, that I can help to bring a, a light on, on someone's depression and help them come through the tunnel, if you like, the tunnel of depression into the light on the other side. Yes. Um, and so, and so when we talk about anxiety, there is a lot of anxiety right now. Uh, people are, especially right now through the COVID crisis, many people are coming to me and saying, I'm feeling anxious. And we, sometimes we see these things as something to be gotten rid of. You know, in the medical community, sometimes people are given pills to get rid of their anxiety or even to get rid of their depression. Um, but I, I take more of the perspective that actually what we want to do is develop a relationship with our anxiety and our depression. We want to embrace our emotions. We want to understand ourselves, you know, this aspect of ourselves that might be anxious. So to find out like we would a young child, well, you know, what are you scared of? Or what is the anxiety about? Um, sometimes the anxiety has wisdom. You know, we could be anxious, let's say, about, our, let's say we're anxious about our finances. Um, it could be alerting us to the fact that maybe we need to take more focus on that area of our life, right? It's not always something to be gotten rid of. I think it's something more to be understood and to felt into. Now, of course, if we're plagued by crippling fear or, you know, um, not unable to function in life because of our fears and anxiety, then that's something a little different. Then we need to look at those, maybe the thoughts or the beliefs, or how do we understand this fear inside of us? Um, that, that maybe we have a, we're holding a belief that maybe I can't take care of myself, right? I can't, let's, if we're using the finances example, I can't take care of my finances. I need help and support. So, but when we start to uncover it, we, we create more of a roadmap for our lives. We, ha we have a clearer path of what maybe action steps we need to take. Often with anxiety, it, there's something we need to take care of. It's alerting us to areas of our life that might need our attention. Uh, one of the mentors I like a lot is uh, Carla McLaren. She has a wonderful website um, all about emotions. And uh, she has a book called The Language of Emotions. And she's actually just releasing a book called Embracing Anxiety and uh, talking about some of these factors 
Uh, but I think the biggest takeaway I want your listeners to, to think about is that emotions are not something to be gotten rid of. There's something to be embraced, understood, connected with. They, they help connect the mind, body, spirit. Oh, this is great. Wonderful <laughs> explanation. And, uh, you know, another major issue is stress. Mm -hmm. How can integrative psychology help with stress? Yes, I think stress is a very important subject. I, am, um, I have many clients who come to me um, with a lot of stress, and I've experienced stress, of course, we all have in our lives. And there's a distinction between, you know, an optimal amount of stress and too much stress. I think it's normal that in an everyday life, there may be stressful times and stressful moments. And um, a large part of, of stress is how we handle stress. So let's say we're feeling very stressed um, about uh, certain situations. Maybe that's the time to increase our exercise or increase our meditation. Um, again, it's not, stress is not always something to be gotten rid of. It's more of, about understanding what might be contributing to the stress. Um, the other thing I find a lot is that we, you know, because we live in a society that has valued productivity and achieving and overworking and doing, that sometimes what we think is a normal life is actually a very stressful life. And so sometimes it's helping working with my clients so that they can come to an understanding that maybe the life they're living is not really suiting them anymore. And that uh, What a wonderful vision. See, and more whole and less stressful. So I have a lot of women, for example, right now I have um, some clients who, who are burnt out in their job. But they're having a lot, you know, they, it takes a while for them to give themselves permission to actually leave their jobs and, and perhaps take a leave and focus on themselves. You know, sometimes it takes another person to say, you know, it's okay that you're doing this. Deep down, they might know they do it, right? They might know what they need, but it can be difficult to, to say, oh, I have to give up my corporate job and take six months off to relax. And, you know, they feel, sometimes we feel like it's a failure on our part to um, yeah. take time off and take care of ourselves. So um, in my work and, and in, in how I hold the frame of my work as an integrative psychologist and coach, my... I guess my main container is wellness. It's how do, you know, it's putting that as the priority. Yes. The rest of our life is, is part of our life and is an important part of our life, but it's not, the priority is not the work or the relationship or the kids, or it's more this general sense of how do I create a life that has a, a sense of health and well-being um, so i find with stress it's it's largely when i work with with stress i think a lot of it comes down to education yes. you know and help giving people permission to take care of themselves um, to help them see what is contributing to their stress you know, they might, they might love, for example, they might love taking care of their children, but maybe doing it 12, you know, 12 hours a day is too much. Maybe they need some help from their parents or a babysitter or grandparents or whatever it is so that they can take a bit of time off to actually de-stress and come back in the body. I think the more we're connected with our bodies, and we let our bodies guide us, we actually can create more wellness and more health. And so I think that's another large part of what I do is I help people to connect with their bodies and, and 
and perhaps say, well, if you're feeling stressed and tired, maybe it's maybe it's with maybe it's wisdom, <laughs> you know, maybe oh, it's yes, yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's about just slowing down and listening to what your body actually needs, which might be creating a life that is less stressful. Yes. Right. In other words, like um, reorganizing the priorities. Yes, or maybe just leaving a job that is very stressful, that is too demanding. You know, I have mothers, women who are mothers who are in high powered jobs and then they feel like they have to come home and cook a meal and take care of the kids. It's too much. Um, you know, they. Yeah. Unless, unless they, they feel they can do, do it with joy and ease, then that's great, you know. But some, for some, maybe that job is outdated for them. Maybe something else is calling them, right? Uh, um, you know, I was in a job in a corporate environment and I left um, to, to go back to school and do other things. And in between, I took six months off and didn't actually know what I was going to be doing. Um, so <laughs> I know that I know that what that feels like when you're, you're trying to fit in, you're trying to fit into a container that no longer suits you. Yes. This is a wonderful vision and completely opens new doors for our listeners. And uh, you are mentioning the body. So my next question will be, What's the connection between integrative psychology, body, the mind, the heart, and the spirit? Well, I, you know, I have come to the understanding that, you know, what we need is wholeness in our lives. Um, I actually saw a quote recently, I think it was on Oprah, who said, you know, don't strive for perfection, strive for wholeness. And as human beings, we are but body, mind, heart, and spirit. Um, recently, I've become very interested in the heart's intelligence. And I study with an organization called HeartMath, which looks at that, the fact that heart intelligence is actually more powerful than the brain. Oh. Yet you know, yet many of us rely on our minds to guide us rather than our, another source of intelligence. You could call it hard intelligence, you could call it spiritual intelligence. Um, but I think we actually uh, feel better when we're connected to all these dimensions. So um, I help people connect their mind, their emotions to their body. I work actually a lot with trauma we haven't talked much about that, but, you know, if you've had a car accident or a sexual trauma, you know, sometimes these things show up in. Yes. Aches and pains could be different. Thing can affect our health, our sleep. Um, and so when I work, you know, with someone, I might be on the lookout for that kind of thing, but I'm really, you know, what I think as an integrative psychologist is I do, I don't see someone as one thing. I'm, I'm not necessarily going to be the person that, um, would, I can't prescribe medication or I can't, I'm not going to give people supplements or things like that. I might refer them to other practitioners but I hold the container that we need physical health. We need mental resiliency. Um, I think we need to be a master of our mind, not let our mind master us. You know, I think that's where the mindfulness and meditation aspect of my work comes in. My belief system comes in. Um, I think listening to our heart and our heart's intelligence helps to connect us to a, a bigger dimension of life, um, a universal dimension of life, um, and um, can create something called heart coherence. I don't know if you know much about um, 
heart coherence probably you do in your own uh, work but uh, in your own way, yes. yes in your own way you know we all come to it from a different um a, from a different perspective but actually you know i start every session with a heart coherence meditation so um already it, we can we, together with myself and the client we can come more connected to our heart rather than just from the stories and thoughts that are running through our mind and so um being able to um cultivate heart intelligence can be very helpful um, so I, I, I use, I, quite, I actually focus quite a bit on that right now because I think it's a beautiful practice. It's very simple to, to create more a sense of inner peace, inner ease. Um, and then the spiritual dimension, um, I, I believe we are spiritual beings, uh, an aspect of ourselves. And spiritual can mean different things to different people. For some, it can mean nature. You know, we could, we're part of nature. For others, it could be a God or a higher intelligence. But I think it's very valuable when we start to think of ourselves larger than the small mind or the small idea that we might have about ourselves and feeling that we can um, trust life and rely on life and use the spiritual dimension um, to build um, again i use that quite a bit in my work because i think sometimes people come to see a therapist and they're a bit hopeless actually um, and so i think when we start to tap into more of a spiritual dimension of life we can actually start to tap into more hope uh, support from unseen unseen forces uh, from the the intelligence of life you know I, I very much have relied on that myself in my life to guide me um, and I really actually I really love helping people to connect to that dimension and that aspect because we all have it you know none of us you know I feel my job is actually more of a catalyst more of a guide um, and helping people more connect to their own wisdom their own guidance you know i don't always know what's right for someone else but i can help them to connect to that inner voice um, and that their inner guidance but it takes a while sometimes to declutter the brain the mind and the the stories that we have about ourselves you know you know the the story that says i can't do this you know i'm i'm not this i can't do that and to help people to uh maybe come to another possibility another voice that might say well why not you know why not you uh, but you know i think we're not we're not all meant for the same life and i think that's where we it's important not to compare to be more connected with what feels whole and right and healthy for you so that we can create more of an an inner inner sense of well-being so it's not it's less dependent on the outside world but more how we feel inside and then in turn how we respond to the outside world it's a dance between those two things it's not linear at all right um but but i think in in you know i i would say i study all those things the body the mind the spirit the heart <laughs> um and so i'm always looking for you know how how to bring people more into a sense of wholeness but i think also i maybe i just help people to see that it's possible i understand right <laughs> and, um, well i would like to ask is integrative psychology open path towards wellness okay yes thank you that's a great question um well i think i think where my work is i think probably where i work the best is i help people to uncover what's preventing wellness um you know people can 
people come to psychologists for many different reasons. Sometimes it's because they don't really know themselves, right? So, so that can help a lot to get to know yourself, what you like, what you don't like. You know, we know that following our joy can, can bring a lot of happiness in our lives. But if we don't know what brings us joy, and some people don't, and there was a point in my life that I didn't know myself as well as I did now. Um, and so I think, I think helping people to get to know themselves can be a great help on the path to wellness. I think the other thing is looking at where what's creating distress, whether it's our thoughts, our feelings, our physical health, you know, um, sometimes just starting an exercise routine or uh, eating better can help people feel better. Um, and, but they need, sometimes we need another person to support us in that. So a psychologist is often like your be a, be a best friend or, but, who can hold that space to, for you to be your best self without judgment um, and create a, a, a container of safety, right? Because I think a, a, sometimes that's not always easy, even it, with our best of friends, it's not always easy to feel totally safe, to be vulnerable, let's say, or to really share our darkest secrets, right? But some of those darkest secrets are getting in the way of our feeling of wellness. When you, you know, when you think about trauma, um, I was actually reading a quote today that said, um, when someone starts talking about their trauma, they're speaking the unspeakable. They're expressing something that's so difficult for them to think about, feel into, to work through and it's not always easy to do it on ourselves uh, sometimes it is like i'm i'm a great believer in journaling i journal a lot and connect to, our, to ourselves um but sometimes we need you know another person it could be it could be a massage therapist a body worker or a therapist or a coach somewhere where we can feel safe to express this aspect, to connect with our, our pain, our disappointments, our shame. These emotions get in the way of our wellness. If we, if we don't, um, if we And in a stagnant, what I would call a stagnant place, right? Where we're just kind of managing our lives, but we're not really moving forward or thriving, you know, in, in certain areas of our life. And, and I think, um, I think so, it's not only psychology, but as an integrated psychologist who understands trauma and how it can affect the body and the spirit and the heart, <laughs> you know, I, I think that's where I can, I can help people get unstuck. And that's where it comes, the coaching. Yes, that come, part of it is the coaching. I think the coaching part is the education. It's helping people to understand why they might be stuck. Sometimes it, people think there's something wrong with them, right? Rather than what happened to them. The circumstances. The circumstances. So it's bringing compassion to their life circumstances so that they can cultivate that more tender place. Oh, yeah, no wonder I'm having difficulty in this area of my life because, because this, this, and this happened. Not to blame, I, I, I really feel like to heal, we need to let go of blaming anyone. It's more about taking responsibility, but it's more understanding, you know? It's understanding that if I broke my leg when I was 15, maybe when I'm 25, I'm not gonna be the best runner in the world, right? Yes. It's, it's more coming to that place of compassion, you know, not to make ourselves feel bad or wrong because I broke my leg, or, 
but you know so trauma is the same thing you know if you've had a difficult traumatic start in life it might need some work to work through it doesn't mean it has to prevent you from living a great life i mean i think oprah is an example of that she had a very difficult uh, childhood and many diff difficult things to using that as a catalyst for our well-being oh this is wonderful so doing the best helping people to see what is preventing them um, from wellness and um, as a trauma-informed therapist i work with two modalities one is emdr i don't know if you've heard of it no it's a it's a modality using eye movements you're actually well there's many different ways to use an emdr but one of them is that you're guiding people um, through bilateral eye movements another one is is through tapping on the body um, and it's helpful to connect to help people to bypass not bypass trauma but to work through trauma if your listeners are interested there's a lot of information on the internet about emdr and there's many therapists in montreal that that do an emdr which is mostly for trauma and then the other tool that i've become very interested in is emotional freedom technique it's a tapping technique um, that is based on tapping on acupressure points on the body helping people to connect to their emotions their thoughts and bringing it into a place of love i don't, I don't know if you're aware of this tool are you aware of this tool um, no, not really. No. Not really. So emotional freedom, again, there's a lot of research. So if people are interested, or they can read about it. Um, so you tap on acupressure points on the body and you say out loud what you're feeling. So let's say you're feeling stress. So it would be even though I'm feeling stress in my body, I deeply love and accept who I am. And you know, I guide people through the tapping sequence. And again, you're bringing a more compassionate uh, connection to the mind body and the thoughts. And it can be very powerful for some people. Not everybody loves it. I, I mean, I, I happen to really like it myself, um, but for some people they love it and that's what they want to do mostly. And for others, it's not really. <laughs> technique to connect with ourselves to free our emotions, as you say. Yes, it's about freeing our emotions. And at the, you know, what we do is we ask someone to feel inside, well, how stressed are you on a scale of one to 10, let's say. Yeah. So let's say we can, and then we suddenly realize, wow, I, I'm, I'm stressed at a level 10, right? <laughs> but then when we actually start to tap and start to, uh, work through the emotions and and what we're experiencing maybe after a tapping session they might be a five or a six so already we're reducing the stress levels um, emotional freedom the science uh, one of the things that science is showing and it's used a lot for uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and for people, for example, coming back from war, veterans, but also more, I think, more recently, things like the shootings, you know, in America with the school shore shootings. Um, there's a wonderful um, guy called Nick Ortner and his sister, Jessica Ortner. They have a website called The Tapping Solution. And um, they actually uh, created groups in, in some of these school environments where the, the schools had had lost children and teachers, and they created tapping circles where people would all tap together, uh, the parents, the teachers, the kids, to create a healing, an environment of healing, but helping people just to process their emotions bit by bit. Sometimes it's too much to try and process everything all the time, you know, 
And when we're supported by other people, when we're given tools that allow us like little bit, you know, like a, like a raindrop on a petal, you know, just, just connect bit by bit with our feelings and our thoughts and what's happening to us that we can start to heal. It's in relaxing that we heal. We don't relax from trying to push or fix or yes. do psychic surgery on ourselves. <laughs> it does. I've tried all of those things. So they don't work. So we need, and now many teachers, many doctors are talking about the relaxation response. We need, that this is where true healing happens. And I feel that is the medicine of the future. Um, and this is yeah. why I love coming to have massages with you, Sebastian. You know, so it helps, great it helps to relax and open the heart and the body and the spirit and the mind and where we can just be, we can gently hold our life experience, um, by let life hold our life experience, but heal drop by drop. Mm -hmm. All this is wonderful, Vian. That's a wonderful vision. I guess people, they will be happy to discover and to know about you. So I would like to ask you, how can people, they reach you? Well, I'm, I, they can find me through my website, um, Which is? vivianbentley.com. I also advertise on Psychology Today. I'm, I'm quite present on the internet. And um, they can find my email or my uh, mobile number. Uh, normally, if people email me or text me, I would offer a free uh, telephone consultation. We can talk to each other about um, if I'm the right person for them. I'm not always. Sometimes I, could, I refer people to other, other practitioners or other people that might have a different kind of expertise. But um, yeah, they can find me probably easiest through my website or through Psychology Today. And sometimes I offer groups. Um, and again, I would, I would put it on Psychology Today and my website. So that would be somewhere. I also have a blog, a newsletter that I send out uh, about once a month. It's on my, it's, uh, I post them on my website. Is so if they want to subscribe to my newsletter, uh, they can just do that. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm also a writer. It's something I'm developing in, uh, at this point to, to write more. So there's many, many ways to connect with me. But if anyone has any questions, they can email me. I'll be happy to, to answer them. Well, 